Hi, today's topic is on GI bleeding. So at the end of this class, students will be able to assess a patient with GI bleed, analyze the pathophysiological process, including the signs and symptoms, create a plan of care for a patient with GI bleed, apply the concepts while taking care of a patient with GI bleed, evaluate the outcome of treatment and nursing care given to a patient with GI bleed. So what is GI bleed? GI bleed refers to any bleeding that starts in the gastrointestinal tract that extends from the mouth to the anus. Upper GI bleed refers to bleeding anywhere from the mouth to the proximal part of the ligament of traits, which is the duodeno-jejunal junction. Any bleeding distal to the ligament of traits is referred to as lower GI bleed. The, causa, the causes and sources of GI bleed. Upper GI bleeds have usually an esophageal, stomach, or duodenal origin. Inflammatory diseases in the colon and ileum like diverticulitis, Crohn's, and ulcerative colitis can also cause bleeding. Drugs, alcohol, cigarette smoking can cause inflammation, vasodilation, and bleeding. Systemic diseases involving the liver, portal hypertension, cardiac diseases can also cause GI bleed. Stress can be related to extensive burns causing Corling's ulcer or other trauma. Bleeding from the esophagus is most likely due to chronic esophagitis, Mallory Weiss tear, and esophageal varices. Gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD and gastritis results in mucosal injury to the mucosal lining and inflammation. Mallory Weiss or gastroesophageal mucosal tear refers to the tears of the mucosa at the junction of the stomach and the esophagus usually caused by severe alcoholism, coughing, retching, and vomiting. Esophageal varices are thin-walled varicosities formed in the submucosa of the esophagus as a result of backflow of blood due to portal hypertension that occurs in cirrhosis of the liver. These are tortuous and can rupture, causing massive hemorrhage and even death. Alcohol and cigarette smoke also causes the mucous membrane to break down and the underlying layers are not able to counteract the harsh effects of the stomach acids causing gastric ulcer which ultimately can result in bleeding. Cancers grow in size and are dysplastic and become invasive and cause erosion to the surrounding tissue as well as rupture the blood vessels. Bleeding due to stomach and duodenal origin. Bleeding peptic ulcers account for 40% of the cases of upper GI bleed. Hemorrhage is caused by bleeding from granulation tissue or from erosion of an ulcer into an artery or vein. Gastritis can result in acute inflammatory process and destroy the mucosa lining exposing the blood vessels which can bleed. Helicobacter pylori or H. pylori is a major cause for chronic gastric ulcer and can cause bleeding. Drugs, either prescription, prescription or over-the-counter OTC, are a major cause of upper GI bleed. NSAIDs like ibuprofen, corticosteroids, and anticoagulants like aspirin, coumadin, anaxaparin and heparin can cause irritation and disruption of the gastroduodenal mucosa. Less common causes of upper GI bleeding include tumors and vascular lesions. Stomach cancer causes steady blood loss as it grows and ulcerates through the mucosa and blood vessels located in its path. Erosion of greater number of superficial blood vessels due to mucosal damage occurs with stress as a result of severe burns, trauma, or major surgery. 
These ulcers commonly develop in the gastric fundic mucosa and proximal duodenum. Bleeding in the lower GI tract. Cancer of the colon and rectum can erode the submucosal layer and damage the vascular layers causing bleeding. Bleeding hemorrhoids and polyps are also frequent causes for lower GI bleed. Polyps are epithelial proliferations that are vascular. They are atta attached to the epithelial surface by a narrow stalk and they bleed when ruptured. Diverticulitis damage the mucosal layers and ulcerative colitis damages the submucosal layer which can result in erosion and damage to the blood vessels causing hemorrhage. Types of GI bleed. There are basically two types, the occult bleeding and the obvious bleeding. In other words, micro bleeding and macro bleeding. The amount of bleeding can range from nearly undetectable to acute, massive, and life-threatening. Microscopic bleeding is when the amount of blood is so small that it can only be detected in the gastric secretions, vomitus, or stool by lab testing, which is called as the occult or the guaiac test. Prolonged microscopic bleeding can result in massive blood loss, eventually causing anemia. Macro bleeding can be massive bleeding of more than 1500 ml of blood where pure blood is passed. Acute massive bleeding can lead to hypovolemia, shock and even death. Obvious bleeding include hematemesis which is bloody vomitus and melina which is black tarry stools, often foul smelling, and indicates slow bleeding from an upper GI source. The longer the passage of blood through the intestines, the darker the stool color because of the breakdown of hemoglobin and the release of iron. It is important to be aware of GI bleeding because it may point to many significant disease conditions. Coffee ground vomitus indicates that the blood has been in the stomach for some time. The severity of GI bleeding depends on whether the origin is venous capillary or arterial. Bleeding from an arterial source is profuse and the blood is bright red. The bright red color indicates that the blood has not been in contact with gastric hydrochloric acid secretion. Bleeding is also characterized by its onset whether acute or insidious, meaning gradual. Diagnostic studies. Endoscopic studies are the primary tool for diagnosing the source of GI bleed. However, radiological radiographic studies, when done, may include abdominal x ray, upper and lower GI series, where a series of x rays are taken at various intervals following ingestion of barium, also known as barium swallow, or after a barium enema, respectively. Barium is, ch is thick, chalky, white liquid when mixed with water and is an X-ray absorber. It appears white on the X-ray. It coats the inside wall of the esophagus, stomach, and intestines. The upper GI series visualizes the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. Ball preparation is necessary. Barium can also cause serious constipation. Esophagogastroduodenoscopy or EGD also requires ball preparation and consent. This is an endoscopic procedure to visualize the, the esophagus, stomach, and duodenum. Gag reflex is to be checked upon return before resuming fluid and diet to avoid aspiration. Angiography is also an invasive procedure and in this procedure a catheter is placed into the left gastric or superior mesenteric 
artery and advanced until the site of bleeding is discovered. It is done only when endoscopy cannot be done. It may not be appropriate for high risk and unstable patient. Bleeding scan is a method where a small amount of bleeding uh, blood is drawn and mixed with a radioactive tracer and injected into the bloodstream. It emits energy in the form of gamma rays which is detected and analyzed to help locate the bleed. Capsule Entroscopy records the images of the digestive tract. The capsule contains a tiny camera which is swallowed and it examines the duodenum, jejunum and the ileum. Lab studies include CBC, BMP, BUN, serum electrolytes, coagulation studies including PT, PTT, INR and hemoglobin and hematocrit is also done. ABGs may be measured typing and crossing for possible blood transfusions. The initial hematocrit may be normal and may not reflect the loss until four to six hours after fluid replacement because initially the losses of plasma and RBC are equal. During a significant hemorrhage, blood proteins are broken down by GI tract bacteria resulting in elevated burn levels. Urinalysis and urine-specific gravity may indicate the hydration status.